Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Chief Executive Officer of Google, Dr. Eric Schmidt. Thank you. Thank you all. First, let me start by welcoming everybody. Many of you traveled a long distance to come here to uh, spend two days with us to talk about the thing I like the most, which is programming. And let me tell you that it's time. It's time for us to take advantage of the amazing opportunity that is before us. And that's what I want to talk about for just a few minutes. Today and tomorrow, you're going to have interesting product announcements, some fun stuff. And perhaps most important, you're going to spend time with the best programmers in the world who are here in the room, literally you all. And we're very excited to have you here. Um, from my perspective, it's time. We have spent 20 years trying to build a programming model that's the right one. We started with the, the mainframe model, then we moved to the PC model, and it had brilliant parts and very frustrating parts. And then the internet arrived. And internet programming, the way we think about it now, is something we have all worked on for all of our career. It's time. Why is it time? We finally now have the networks, the businesses, the programmers, the programming tools that can build the kind of platforms and the kind of opportunities that I want to highlight. Today and tomorrow, you're going to hear a lot about some of the Google technologies many of you, you, you are already using. For example, Google Web, Web Toolkit. You know, we used to say write once, run anywhere with Java back in my, old, in my old job. Now it's write once and run on any browser, right? Uh, because the browsers have become so complicated. That's what GWT is all about. We're going to see a lot more things about a product called App Engine, which now today includes, by the way, support for Java, right? Which is great, and more presumably coming. The notion of these platforms as powerful platforms are part of a story that's been true forever. And it's a story that innovation always occurs elsewhere. It never is in the little world that I sit in or that you sit in. It's always somewhere else. There's always a programmer an inventor, a brilliant person, who's somewhere other than where you are. They need to use a platform that you build. They need, for example, to be able to use a platform even if they don't speak English, and even if they don't really understand some of the other things that you've done, but because they have an idea and they have a vision. And maybe they use the wrong operating system or they have the wrong background or whatever, but they're clever and they're smart. And that's how innovation occurs. It's always been true, and it will always be true. And that's why we're here today. Maybe you're here to talk about Android and some of the things that we're doing there. Android looks like it's going to have a very strong year. Not only do we have many thousands of applications now as part of our Android application store, but we also have many hardware partners that are coming along to build innovative new hardware platforms, which look like phones, but do a lot of things that, 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 that are not normally associated with phones. Again, the innovation cycle continues. So what we want you to do is we want you here to spend your time with our teams and vice versa and yourselves with each other to try to figure out what we can do now. So why is it time? Why is it time? Why is it time to take the challenge? Because people are frustrated. They're tired of the complexity of all the systems that have been built up over the last 10, 20 years. They don't work that well. Where's the it works option? Where's the button where it just installs and works? Why do we keep adding complexity after complexity in our, in our world? Well, here's an opportunity using AJAX programming, the new programming languages, the new programming paradigm that we're going to talk about in the next couple of days to build another step higher, to bring another level of functionality that ultimately means power can generate simplicity and ultimately make these systems simpler and easier to use by the people we serve who are not programmers. They're not computer scientists. They're not engineers. I'm one of these people who believes that computer science is at the center of the universe. I'm one of these people who believes that what we do as scientists, as programmers, as people who care about making the world a better place can really scale. I'm a person who believes that scalability and the power, as, as evidenced by the power of the internet, is just beginning. And I would tell you that we're just at the beginning of getting this right. When we talk about cloud computing, 
we talk about all the new kinds of devices, you're seeing a whole new set of companies, ideas, product solutions, competitors, all sorts of things, all coming from this shared vision around a new programming model. It's not the old programming model where I was handed a book and said, program against these interfaces against this standard OS, and everything will work locally. But it's a similar model where I can go pick the very best of this code and that code, put it together, mash it, if you will, have it automatically compiled, and have it deliver tremendous performance for all of us. With this, we can take the collective intelligence of the internet, which is astounding, all that information, all those things going on, and do amazing things. We can tell people what's going to happen. We can tell people what's happening nearby. We can follow what they care about. As you walk down the street, we can tell them the history of the buildings as we walk along. We can do image recognition to sort of see what's happening. All of these are applications that someone in this room has already built. All of you are busy building the version two of all of those kinds of things. It's phenomenal. So my message to you is this is the beginning of the real win of cloud computing, of the real win of applications, of the real win of the internet, which is changing the computing paradigm, the one that we've all grown up with, so it just works. And it works no matter what device you're using, whatever operating system you're using, as long as you're connected, and even if you're not offline with some caching, you're on and you have everything you need. That's the promise of our new web computing model, which we're all talking about. We're going to show you some amazing technology and some amazing partnerships that we've done in the next hour and a half. I'm delighted that you're here, and I'm excited about what we're doing. And I want to take a minute to thank you for coming and also introduce Vic Kondrata, who is the executive who's in charge of all of our developer programs, all of our mobile programs, and lots of our businesses. Vic, can you join me on stage? Thank you very much. Thank you, Eric. Take, take Appreciate care, it. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for those opening comments, Eric, and good morning, everybody. Welcome to I.O. Never underestimate the web. It's a mistake that I once made. It was about a half a decade ago, and I was leading a team at Microsoft responsible for driving the developer adoption of Windows. Of course we had seen the emergence of the web, but we argued that web apps could never rival desktop apps. In fact, our favorite and our canonical example was from a small Bay Area company called Keyhole. Keyhole had made the fan most fantastic geo-visualization software for Windows. And it was exactly that kind of software that we argued could never be done on the web. In November of 2004, Google acquired that small company and a few months later released maps.google.com with satellite views, a web app that simply left us stunned. Maybe you remember the first time you, from any browser, were able to zoom down into your own backyard. You know, Google, apps, Google Maps was amazing, is amazing. But what was even more important was what that application was foretelling. That we would see what we formerly thought was impossible become possible, even commonplace in the browser. Yes, the web has won. It has become the dominant programming model of our time. In many respects, this conference, Google I.O., is about a celebration of that open web platform. And this morning, I'd like to talk to you about the ongoing evolution of, of, of the web, of making a more powerful web made easier. And this morning's keynote is broken up into two broad sections. In the opening section, I'm going to show you uh, what's making the web more powerful? Some new HTML5 standards that are enabling us to build applications that I think will surprise users. And in the second half of the keynote, I'm going to highlight some Google services that we believe can help you uh, build those apps much easier. So let's get started here. Let me find the clicker. You know, I think when you look back over the last year, in fact, just the last eight, nine months, you have to be amazed at the rate our web platform is accelerating. I, it seems like almost every other month we've had a browser released, even, uh, either for the desktop or for mobile. And these new browsers are not just faster. I mean, of course they're faster. 
But even more importantly, these browsers are incorporating net new functionality that frankly, I'm not sure most developers know about. This new 